The real reason behind the redesigning of the Nigerian Naira notes. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, announced the redesign of the new Naira notes in order to enhance the security futures and curb counterfeiting. The public outcry was due to concern about the cost of the new design, the burden it will place on small businesses, and the need for proper consultation with stakeholders. The National Assembly also raised questions about the cost of the redesign and the potential impact it will have on the economy. The CBN governor has stated that the redesign of the Nera note is aimed at curbing corruption, stemming kidnapping and terrorism, and adding value to the currency. The new design is expected to include improved security features that will make it more difficult for counterfeiters to produce fake notes, which will help to reduce fraud and other illegal activities. Additionally, the redesign notes are intended to better reflect the cultural heritage and identity of Nigeria. It has been reported that the cash swap project carried out by the CBN and commercial banks has been plugged by various challenges, including insufficient availability of the new Nera note in circulation. These have led to instances of Akatiani, where some individuals and businesses are ordering the new note and selling them at a higher price. It has created shortage of the new notes in circulation and has caused difficulties for many Nigerians, especially those in rural areas who do not have access to banks and ATMs. The CBN has stated that it is working to address this issue and increase the availability of the new notes. But it is a complex and ongoing process. Fair advocates, what has been your experience over the time on this uh, new <laughs> Do you want us to start? You want to, you want us to scatter this thing? You I want us to go hit oh, up the are politics? You, are you looking so for that nobody will you know, go to work on Monday? <laughs> <laughs> because hmm. so, so, I mean, I personally, I'm, I'm actually generally bad with cash. You know, thankfully, so I've not been cash trapped yet over the past maybe one week. Hmm. You know, um, I don't know what happened next week. It's, it's rather it's rather sad, you know, it's rather unfortunate that we're dealing with, yeah, no. you know, sixth world, you know, I thought they said we were third world. This must be sixth world, <laughs> no, I, I think sixth might be world problem, world. tenth world problem, it's killed, right? It's <laughs> because you have data, you know how many people withdraw money, you know how much the bank gets, you know how much, I mean, you're the apex bank, it means you're supposed to have data. So it's how do you make obvious that the central bank of no does not get appraised by anybody. Mm -hmm. Because if he gets appraised by anybody, he, been fired by now. he would have been fired by now. Yeah, That's one. Now, Two, yeah. every claim that they have made, it's not yesterday that kidnapping started in Nigeria. It's not last week that um, hoarding. the hoarding has been ongoing. He has been there for how many years? And he never, he didn't think about redesigning in 2020. He didn't think about redesigning in 2019. So every claim, every excuse that they have given or reason for this redesign, in my opinion, is a lie. There's something else that is prompting this. He knows it. We speculate because we think we know it. But whatever it is that he's doing, he just needs to end it and make life exactly. easy for people. Yeah. It's not until people have started removing clothes in the bank. Mm. I saw something yeah. yesterday, some lady was yes. naked in a yes. bank. Another one Actually, today, a man cool. climbed on top of a table, yeah. removed his clothes. We don't yeah. have to get to this point. This is 2023. Please. Not to, not to even mention the, the sheer lack of creativity in redesigning the app oh, thing. No. Let's you not know, even go there. Just, you know, let's not even go It says he wants if to you must, promote our culture. Which yeah, culture? If you must, all you did was just change yes. colors. And those were colors we had before. Colors that we had before. You know, just went back to the colors. Just and the, the thing is even fading. Just die. Right? A plus. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Tell our advocate, do you also look at it from uh, comparing this development with the likes of China? Because I can also see videos in China where uh, some claim 
people said they could not send China North movies for uh, R&D for almost like two, three years. And they've been on electronic transfers using Alipay and WeChat. What can you say to that? Let's but not, their electronic let's, transfers let's not, work. Let's, uh, they say, work. When you want to compare Nigeria with countries, you have to be <laughs> careful. The I'm kind telling of, you. Compare really? apples with apples. You went to China. Like, don't compare apples with Abalimo. <laughs> really? Are you being serious? <laughs> you didn't you're talking the, you're talking you about the most, in, the in most tech opinion, I think. country in the world. Yeah. Where technology in works, where internet works, where they have 5G, where internet is a... I mean, when was the last time you recharged your data from your bank? Can you even log into your bank uh, app to start? I couldn't with, I have with my app yesterday. People can't log into their bank app. You're talking about the electronic transfers. Are you, uh -huh. Let's be serious now. Oh. <laughs> are you aware that there are other solutions beyond electronic transfer that people are not actually accepting? Mm -hmm. The likes of QR code, and that's what they actually use in the likes of China. They do, they Sorry, where you are? Don't <laughs> Sorry, where you are in Delta? <laughs> what are you doing to pay right now? Where you are now? What are you? I hope you have some QR, QR codes in the uh, South Asia. What are you doing in the last two days? <laughs> QR code. I we, just want to know. We in Lagos, we cannot access QR code. It's you in Delta. Hey, please. Who said no? Is, are you are you talking about the CBI government? Is that something we don't know right now? Do you want to intimate? Well, so yes, people? I think I think I have to. Just playing devil's advocate. Yeah, you are playing the devil's advocate since we are on the advocates. Eh? Today, today, yes, Great. exactly. So mm -hmm. today we have uh, the CBI having account of. of how many print that's a, a legal tender fiscal cash they printed and how many is within the vote of the bank and the ones that are outside the bank but today they don't have a, a, a data of how this money has been spent so i think what they are trying to achieve is to properly monitor the trans tra transaction of how this fiscal cash and the cbn governor was specifically clear of saying we are not, we should not expect the higher domination like 541,000 out in terms of uh, uh, availability at all time because mm -hmm. he's trying to. Do you know this? This policy has been out since 2012 and uh, they've been trying to drive adoption. Mm -hmm. And you know, as Nigerians, if things are not forced, we don't change, we don't really? move to change. Sorry. And, and, I, and I believe it, if we look at it critically, it helps us. It, it, uh, this policy is actually going to grow our economy, but there is need for certain amendments. Like I give you an example for uh, using your POS. POS transactions are actually not categorized to say you are using it for point of sales to purchase things at supermarket and what have you, or you are withdrawing it for cash. That needs recategorization so that people could at least buy a bag of rice for, for 5000 using your POS. You know? So there are needs for stakeholders. That's why I'm saying that there, there are some stakeholders that are left out while this plan was ongoing. And I believe if it, all stakeholders, stakeholders are carried along, will have proper orientation and the adoption will not be as crazy as it is right now because everybody is actually suffering for lack of understanding and knowledge of the impact or the, the positivity of the CBM policy. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. Adam, thanks. Thanks. You're saying. I mean. Yeah. Now you are getting closer to the point. Yeah, you you know the fact that <laughs> stakeholders have to be have to be put in consideration when you're doing a policy. I mean, so it's simple. If you don't want to use cash, then make sure there's a backup plan that works. It's, I mean, it's a, it's a no-brainer. If you don't want me to use A, then provide B or C. You know, when the in the situation where A is not available and I don't have a backup plan or a backup plan to that backup plan, then it becomes useless. Intentions are useless. You know, Nigeria doesn't really care about the intentions right now. We're talking about results, right? So if you have great intentions, yeah, everybody knows there's going to be carrying cash. I mean, if you travel abroad, I mean, when Nigerians go abroad and they go around with their PTA, they look at you like, are you normal? People don't carry cash abroad. But that's because the systems work. You use your card, it works. The mm -hmm. POSs abroad, they work. Why are the roadside POS, POSs, how did they become so prevalent? It's not because the, ATM, the ATMs don't work, exactly. don't work and the banks don't work. That's why you, that's, I mean, so they were the backup plan. You know, so it just speaks to, to, to the failure of the system. Really, is it, an, is it an issue of adoption or implementation? And secondly, maybe we should really take a good look at where the actual laziness is coming from. Is it the people or policymakers in critical thinking and implementation? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I, I think it's, it's more of the policymakers, right? The policymakers are uh, most of the time from banking sector who 
follow the former second, uh, former standard, of which they are, sometimes they don't have the detailed knowledge or deep knowledge rather of the informal sector. And uh, you agree with me that the informal sector are the true ones that are driving the economy. Because a lot of uh, commodities that we buy to the farmers and what have you, they are more of the informal sector. So before you enact such policy or bring up such policy as well as it is, there are certain stakeholders in the informal sectors that need, or people who understand the informal sectors that need to be on the round table to see how possible you can, you know, uh, encourage them to be part of the policy. Because today, to do a transfer to somebody who is selling paper at the roadside, you know, you can't guarantee that you get value. And they don't even have, some of them don't even have a bank account. So there are a lot of things that are wrong, you know, and we should uh, encourage the CBN to take amends, you know. Yeah. As good as the policy could be, there is need for amendment. Okay, thank you. Yes. Well, I guess that was um, some dimension to the reason behind the redesign. I believe that in the days to come, we will still know more. And hopefully, we do, we really advocate that the Central Bank of Nigeria and the Federal Government of Nigeria gets a speedy resolution to the crisis that is on ground right now. Because it is, I mean, we're advocating for strength, but then we need that this be resolved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sisi Lokpe Ibilola is next after the break.